Cardioverter defibrillators. Cardioversion is the discharge of electrical energy synchronized on the ECGR wave. The electrophysiological basis for cardioversion is probably the closure of the excitable gap in a reentrant circuit. Required energy is as low as 1 to 5 joules. Defibrillation refers to unsynchronized discharge. Required energy is much higher, up to 360 joules, probably due to the need for depolarizing the whole myocardium and multiple asynchronous reentrant circuits. Sudden cardiac death, SCD, is estimated to claim 25 lives per million people per week in the USA. In out of hospital cardiac arrest, the prevalence of ventricular fibrillation, VF, is high, and more than 80% of cases, present as ventricular tachycardia, VT, which degenerates into VF. Importance of early defibrillation Overall mortality associated with out-of-hospital cardiac arrest is 75%. Self-termination of VF is exceedingly rare, if not impossible. The single most important factor, determining survival, is the time between the onset of collapse and the first defibrillation attempt. Two types of cardioverter defibrillators are used in clinical practice. 1. Automatic implantable cardioverter defibrillators. 2. External cardioverter defibrillators. Automatic implantable cardioverter defibrillators, AICD. AICD was designed to prevent delay in providing definitive therapy. The first experimental model of AICD was built at Sinai Hospital in Baltimore City, Maryland State, USA and was successfully tested in a dog in 1969. Eleven years later, Murkowski and co-workers performed the first automatic defibrillator implantation in a human at the Johns Hopkins University Medical Center on February 4, 1980. Immediate Response the internal defibrillator responds by delivering an electrical shock between intrathoracic electrodes within 10 to 20 seconds of arrhythmia onset, a time frame in which the potential for arrhythmia reversal with shock approach is 100%. System Components AICD system consists of two basic components, the pulse generator and the lead electrodes used for sensing, pacing and shocking. The pulse generator contains Battery Energy storing electrolytic capacitors. Electronic components. Outer covering made of titanium. Header of epoxy, having two to four lead receptacles. Functions of AICD. All of today's devices are not only defibrillators, but perform the following four functions. 1. Internal defibrillation. 2. Synchronized cardioversion. 3. Anti tachycardia pacing. 4. Bradycardia pacing. Sensing and detection. An endocardial lead senses ventricular depolarization, and the incoming signals are amplified, filtered, and rectified, corrected, to produce a set of RR intervals, which are used by the detection algorithm. Single pulse. A single pulse for each sensed event is produced for use by the timing circuits, thanks to an auto adjusting threshold sensor. An auto-adjusting signal amplifier. A band pass filter that rejects low-frequency T waves and high-frequency noise. A rectifier, that converts amphoteric current into direct current voltage. The latter is more effective, less harmful to the myocardial tissue, and less arrhythmogenic. Auto-adjusting threshold sensor. The R waves of ventricular depolarization are sensed by the auto-adjusting sensitivity threshold sensor. The sensed R waves are then analyzed, using the device algorithm, to detect a tachyarrhythmia that should be treated. Auto-adjusting signal amplifier. Intracardiac ECG amplitude can vary markedly between rhythms such as sinus rhythm, SR, VT and VF, or even during the same rhythm as occurs with VF. Automatic signal amplifier continuously varies the gain so that the amplitude of the processed signal is constant. This may however, result in undersensing or oversensing. VF detection VF detection interval or cycle length is programmed, and whenever the intervals between cardiac cycles are shorter than this interval, the device is triggered. This approach results in maximal sensitivity at the expense of specificity, that is, 
any tachycardia with a cycle length shorter than the tachycardia detection interval will be detected as VF by the device, and VF therapy, DC shock, will be initiated. Reconfirmation algorithm In most devices a reconfirmation algorithm must be fulfilled, during or at the end of capacitor charging, and prior to the delivery of therapy, the device continues tachycardia sensing during capacitor charging and aborts shock therapy for self-terminating events, to prevent many unnecessary shocks. VT detection The ICD has at least two tachyarrhythmia detection zones. The fastest tachyarrhythmia zone is the VF detection zone. Between this zone and sinus rhythm, VT zone can be programmed. Atrial activity can often be sensed by the ICD, and may cause inappropriate discharges, about 25% of ICD discharges are inappropriate, most commonly due to tachycardias resulting in a ventricular rate above the tachycardia detection rate, for example, sinus tachycardia or atrial fibrillation, AF. Unlike VF detection, to increase the specificity in VT detection. Most VT detection algorithms require a programmable number of consecutive intervals shorter than VT detection interval. Optional detection enhancement criteria, including onset and stability criteria, are also programmable. The onset criterion is intended to distinguish VT, characterized by a sudden rate increase, from sinus tachycardia with a gradual rate increase. The stability criterion is used to differentiate sustained monomorphic VT with a small variation in cycle length, from AF with large cycle length variability. In practice, however, there is considerable overlap of both onset and stability values between ventricular and nonventricular tachycardias. Sustained rate duration Programming of detection enhancement criteria improves specificity, but at the expense of sensitivity. To avoid excessive delay in therapy delivery due to either onset or stability criteria, sustained rate duration is programmed, when the rate detection criterion is fulfilled, while detection enhancement criteria are non-fulfilled, the programmed therapy will be delivered after the sustained rate duration. Troubles with ICD can then be summarized as 1. Sensing malfunction, undersensing or oversensing. 2. Inappropriate shocks for self-terminating events. 3. Lack of specificity, inability to differentiate between VTVF and other tachyarrhythmia. 4. Considerable overlap between onset and stability values of different arrhythmias. VF therapy. The only available therapy for VF is defibrillation. Biphasic waveform, reversing electrode polarity during capacitor discharge is much more efficient than monophasic waveform. Syncope before defibrillation The subject commonly loses consciousness between the onset of VF and the delivery of defibrillation shock, which is regained after successful defibrillation. The ICD is designed to prevent sudden cardiac death, not to prevent syncope. Indeed, the delivery of a high-energy defibrillation while conscious is painful. It is estimated that a systolic blood pressure of 60 mmHg or less, maintained for 6 seconds or more, usually ends in syncope. Since the ICD responds by delivering an electrical shock within 10 to 20 seconds of arrhythmia onset, syncope commonly develops before shock delivery. VT therapy VT therapy progresses through a programmable sequence of responses, tiered therapy, until the episode is terminated. 1. Anti-tachycardia pacing, ADP. 2. Cardioversion, synchronized DC shock. 3. Defibrillation, non-synchronized DC shock. Anti-tachycardia pacing. Most sustained monomorphic VT, particularly in patients with coronary artery disease, are due to re-entry and can be terminated by overdrive pacing, which unfortunately also carries the risk of tachycardia acceleration. Termination occurs in 80 to 90 percent, while acceleration occurs in the remaining cases. Pacing with backup defibrillation, if acceleration occurs, is an attractive and well-tolerated treatment, that avoids unnecessary high-energy shock therapy. Bradycardia pacing Bradycardia pacing in the currently available ICD obviates the need for separate pacemaker implantation. Either VVI or dual-chamber pacing is used for bradycardia. 
Bradycardia pacing usually requires lower pacing thresholds than those needed for overdrive pacing, the pacing outputs, therefore, are separately programmable. Patient Selection Careful patient selection is essential if the benefits of AICD therapy are to translate into a reduction in total mortality. AICD therapy may be offered for primary prevention of cardiac arrest, or secondary prevention in survivors of cardiac arrest, or VT with syncope or hypotension. Transvenous Systems Compared to the older surgically implanted ICDs, Transvenous ICD systems resulted in lower mortality and morbidity, shorter hospital stay and lower cost, but with comparable long-term efficacy. Transvenous systems became feasible after the development of integrated lead systems, allowing sensing, shocking, and pacing, and biphasic defibrillation waveforms. Implantation Testing Meticulous device testing at the time of implantation is essential, including Lead testing. Defibrillation testing. AICD system testing. Lead position should be as close as possible to the right ventricular apex. During sinus rhythm, the following are assessed, satisfactory sensing, pacing threshold, and pacing lead impedance. Defibrillation testing. Defibrillation testing requires repeated induction of VF and repeated attempts at defibrillation, to define the defibrillation threshold. VF is induced by any of the following, a critically timed T-wave shock, very rapid burst pacing, or alternating current. Defibrillation threshold Defibrillation threshold, DFT, is defined as the minimum energy producing defibrillation success. The probability of success increases steadily with each increase in energy until a 100% success plateau is reached. Pre-discharge ICD system testing after adequate intraoperative testing to ensure satisfactory sensing, pacing threshold, and lead impedances, pre-discharge ICD system testing involves chest X-ray, to evaluate lead position, non-invasive programmed stimulation, using the device programmer, VF is induced, appropriate sensing of VF and ability to defibrillate with an adequate safety margin are confirmed. Sustained monomorphic VT may be induced and anti-tachycardia pacing algorithms tested. Long-term follow-up Following implantation, most variables remain fixed, but long-term follow-up is essential because Drug therapy may increase defibrillation thresholds. Underlying disease processes may worsen. Battery will need replacement at some time. Every three months. Assess battery status. Assess pacing and sensing lead parameters. Diagnose the cause of any delivered therapy. Annually. Obtain radiographs of the ICD system. Device testing similar to the pre-discharge test, if no defibrillation was delivered in the preceding year. Elective replacement. Continuing need for ICD therapy in many patients is confirmed by late shocks occurring many years after primary implantation. The decision to replace the device in patients without previous shocks must be individualized, and depends on Type of arrhythmia Circumstances of its occurrence Nature and severity of underlying heart disease Results of electrophysiological testing Presence of other comorbid factors Psychosocial issues The ICD is generally well accepted by most patients. Some restriction on driving should be considered. Some physicians argue that patients with ICD should not be allowed to drive again. Others permit driving in patients who do not lose consciousness, and those who have not experienced a discharge after 6 to 12 months, but recurrent arrhythmic events may still occur despite a long initial shock-free interval. Procedure-related ICD complications Short-term Proarrhythmia, atrial fibrillation Ventricular tachyarrhythmia storm Respiratory, atelectasis, aspiration, pulmonary embolism, pneumonia, arts, pleural effusion Pericardial, pericarditis, effusion Myocardial infarction Cerebrovascular accident Hematoma, in pulse generator pocket or subcutaneous patch Seroma, in pulse generator pocket or subcutaneous patch Subclavian complications, 
pneumothorax, air embolism, subclavian artery puncture, venous thromboembolism, phrenic nerve stimulation, long term, infection, erosion, migration, venous thromboembolism, constrictive pericarditis, patch related vessel erosion, endocarditis, system related ICD complications. Lead related, dislodgement, gross or micro dislodgement, twiddler's syndrome, conductor fracture, insulation defect, perforation, diaphragmatic pacing, malposition, loose set screw, loose adapter, exit block, premature battery depletion, oversensing, double counting of T waves, R waves, or pacing spikes. Misdiagnosis of atrial fibrillation or sinus tachycardia. Undersensing. Proarrhythmia. External cardioversion and defibrillation. Procedure of cardioversion. Timing, in elective cases, preferably in the early morning with the patient in the fasting state, while in urgent cases, meals should be withheld for as long as possible. Investigations, serum electrolytes, bun, creatinine. Digoxin level. Hypokalemia must be corrected before cardioversion is attempted. Digitalis glycosides should be withheld only on the day of cardioversion, but if digitalis toxicity is suspected, the procedure is postponed until the problem is resolved. Preparation. Intravenous line. Vital signs are recorded and monitored. ECG is recorded and monitored. CPR equipment should be available. General anesthesia or intravenous diazepam or minocilam is administered. Synchronization with the tallest R wave on the ECG prevents accidental triggering of VF. Synchronization should be checked after each discharge. Improper synchronization may occur with bundle branch block, highly T waves, or pacemaker spikes. Electrodes Two electrodes are used so that the current flow is along the long axis of the heart and encompasses the bulk of cardiac tissue and minimizes travel through high impedance bony tissue. Anterior electrode, in the right parasternal second and third intercostal spaces. The second electrode is either lateral, positioned over the cardiac apex, anterior lateral configuration, or posterior, placed at the tip of the left scapula, anterior posterior configuration. Adequate electrical contact. Electrode paste with firm pressure on the electrodes, should be used to provide adequate electrical contact and to reduce transthoracic impedance. Avoid bridging of the electrodes by conductive paste, as this will reduce the amount of energy delivered to the heart. Avoid accidental shocking of attendants, all clear signal should be given prior to discharge, and CPR should be stopped. Energy Titration Energy titration is advisable to reduce energy use and minimize complications. The initial shock depends on the clinical setting, particularly on the type of arrhythmia, for example, it may be as low as 10 joules for atrial flutter and stable ventricular tachycardia, and in digitalized patients, we may start with only 5 joules. Energy output is increased progressively to 25, 50, 100, 200, and 360 joules. If ventricular tachyarrhythmias emerge or reappear after a discharge, intravenous xylocaine is administered before the next discharge, and cardioversion cautiously continued. Post-cardioversion care Respiration, proper airway is maintained, and adequate ventilation delivered until recovery from anesthesia occurs. Monitor vital signs and cardiac rhythm continuously for at least 24 hours, to detect the late emergence of malignant arrhythmias which may occur in patients with suspected digitalis or quinidine toxicity. Thank you.